good with that. So thank you so much, Sally. I'm so excited to have you on the podcast. I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, this is like long overdue because yeah. everybody needs to hear more of Sally's voice. <laughs> and oh, if you, you're very kind. If you haven't watched Sally's view, I'll be talking about that later. So Sally Mitchell, tell everybody a little bit about you. Oh, goodness. Um, where to start? Um, I'm a little bit older than your average mortgage mum. Um, I've had quite a, a varied career from recruitment um, and fashion buying, a gallerist buying art. I've lived in America. Wow. I lived in Spain. Don't interrupt. <laughs> I know you didn't know this, did you? No. <laughs> this is going to be an education. <laughs> yeah, so there's all sorts of things I've done. I've fitted in having two children. I've been a wife. Didn't go so well. Um, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm obviously a mum daughter friend all those things and now at my grand old age I'm a mortgage broker and I did not see it coming you did <laughs> really not see didn't. it coming nope it's just one of those things that happened and how and when did that moment happen for you well I blame my brother and I think I'm um, so very similar to a lot of the brokers that there's been a sort of I don't know a converging of opportunity and a little bit of fate and perhaps serendipity that brought me to Sarah um and my brother is in the financial publishing um uh, arena and I was saying to him my children were getting older they were going to university and I really needed a proper job I'd I'd, I'd done galleries I'd done fashion buying I'd I'd done bits and pieces sort of part-time but they were leaving um the nest and I thought it's time it's my time to do something for me that I will be able to fit around still family commitments living in the country, which I love. I didn't want to do a commute, um, but something that I could carry on and on until, you know, for another 15, 20 years, I think I've got 20, 25 years of, of work still in me and something that would really, I don't know, give me a bit of a sort of a, a buzz. Years ago, I was in recruitment and I loved helping people, but I also loved the sales side of it and the getting a deal done. Yeah, And it's probably not really the sort of thing that maybe you want a broker to say but I think that drive is really important because it's what makes you get the deal over the line for your client I think it's a you've got to care but you've got to have that slight hunger and sort of competitive edge absolutely and that's where that's where I get my buzz that's why I love it so I was probably moaning to my brother my poor long-suffering brother (laughs) saying I live in the country I'm really old (laughs) I haven't worked properly for 20 years. So who's going to want me? Blah, blah, blah. And he said, you should be a mortgage broker. <laughs> I said, where's that come from? And he said, think of it. It's perfect. It's the, you know, you're quite savvy. You, you, you like a, a, a deal, the chase of the deal. Um, you love helping people. You like to talk. Can you tell? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. You never stop. <laughs> and it just so happened that his um, publication had run um, a, a feature on Sarah and the mortgage mum. I'm talking to my audience. I should be talking to you, Sarah. Sorry. I'm talking to the no, audience. no. Uh, I talk to the audience too. So you're oh, all good. Right. So this is what happened. And he said, I'm going to send it to you. Have a look. I think it's a really good fit. Um, years ago, I worked in a company that was 99.9% women. So I actually quite like that vibe. I, I love that sort of the team, the sort of, support everything that you get from working with really really special women so I was quite excited read the article thought oh this could be for me so I phoned up bold as brass <laughs> and said I'm really interested in becoming a mortgage broker and I really thought because this is the way my mind works if I want something it's going to happen yeah I thought they're going to say either yes or no <laughs> and um the lady I spoke to, Alison, was incredibly helpful and supportive, but she did point out, just as I was almost sort of, you know, saying, when do I start, that I would have to actually qualify to be a broker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how long does that take then? Well, you know, sort of six months a year, depending if you want to do it quickly, you can do a fast track, but it's, you know, studying and three exams, three exams. <laughs> Ooh, this is a person who hasn't done an exam. Yeah for a very, very long time. And, um, you know, wasn't sure. Anyway, uh, she gave me the confidence to sort of pursue it. 
a bit more. So um, I got my CMAP books and I studied and then I discovered Paul Archer. Shout out to Paul Archer. Yes, lovely who, Paul Archer. Oh, lovely Paul Archer, who does a boot camp um, for mortgage brokers. And it was so helpful. It was collaborative. It was informative. It was fun. It was broken down into bite-sized pieces. It was just brilliant. Got qualified. And luckily, there was a spot for me um, at the Mortgage Mum. So I started just over a year ago. Amazing. So it, it feels like you've been doing this so much longer, Sally, I have to say. It yeah. feels like I've been working with you for longer than a year. But it is well, almost a year to the day, isn't it? That we yeah, I think I started in October. Um, yeah, started broking in November. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, in the magic gone... seven, as we called you. Yeah, yeah, the magic seven. Yeah. Which is rather but nice. it's gone so quick. But yet yeah, you feel like you've been doing this a long time. I think I do. you've landed where you I were really meant did. to land. Um, yeah, I think, I think so. It's just everything just came together it's yeah it's it's weird it's serendipity and has your brother gloated about this at any point yes he thinks that he is <laughs> he is your god he, he deserves a fee <laughs> oh wow <laughs> but I have done his mortgage oh that's good there you go so so I, and, I, and I didn't charge him <laughs> oh <laughs> well there you go. you go he's paid back in exactly non-broker fee no 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 broker fee for him I I, I couldn't because he found me this spot so that was lovely (laughs) I think that's so inspiring as a story and I'm sure there's so many listeners that are going to be listening to this and thinking well maybe I could and whether it's mortgage broking or anything maybe I could and I think that that's part of why I really wanted to share that is because it doesn't matter what stage of life you're at right you can always choose again yeah exactly which is is lovely I mean I looked at my sort of life unfolding after spending so many years bringing up children and I thought well it's sort of is that it what what's what's the next chapter I'm I've got so much that I can give and so much that I want to really achieve you know just that that feeling of self-worth yeah you, you've done a good and, and almost like an honest day's work yes Do you know what I mean it's 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 just it's good for the soul it which really is so is lovely so what has been, if you can pick any moment as a broker, what has been your, a, a favourite moment of yours? Oh, okay. That, just completely off the cuff. And whenever anyone says that, I always think that's no, been prepared, but this really is off the cuff. Yes. So a lovely client, because there are so many good moments, but I've got a, a, a couple of clients at the moment who they stress they're not they're not first time buyers they're not young they've been around the block they've done this before but they just get terribly stressed yeah. and they end up having a go, having a bit of a go at each other and the other day they phoned me the husband phoned me and said we're in a, we're in a right state we're in a right state um you've got to help us you've got to help us i don't know what, what what's going on what's going on we just don't, don't know what's happening I said, just calm cool your heels cool your heels and they're bickering on the other end of the phone he's saying i'm talking to her <laughs> as you can hear in the background doing this and they were they were really quite they were vibrating at a very high frequency shall we say so i just found it absolutely hilarious because they we're stressing over absolutely nothing, but I said, just calm down, tell me about it, tell me about it. And in two minutes, he was laughing and he said, honestly, you should be a marriage guidance <laughs> counsellor <laughs> as well as a mortgage broker, because I phone you in the most you know, horrendous state. And within literally five minutes, you've got me oh. laughing and we're all lovey dovey again. Thank you, because I think I would have killed her. <laughs> if you hadn't. <laughs> Come on the phone. Uh, oh, that is the Sally effect, though. I oh, mean, I haven't laughed this much in ages, especially on a podcast interview. I feel like I'm just giggling, basically, just, my way through it. It's just so funny. I mean, just things like that happen. It's I don't know whether it's just me, but things like that seem to happen really very regularly. But you do fi- see the funny. Fun oh, it's side. just so funny. It's... It, because it wasn't a major disaster you know if it had been something awful then I obviously I wouldn't have laughed but they were <laughs> they just needed someone to um, vent against and and to sort of um pass it over and I think that's what yeah. we do as brokers a lot of the time we are not an emotional punch bag but we we take the stress 
yes. away from the client. Yes, that's our whole job as far as yeah. I'm concerned. And I, and I think that's a really important part of the job. Definitely. Yeah, you build them up, you, you, you talk them down off that ledge. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and hold their hand through the process virtually. Fun. And that's just that's just one yeah, example. There's been oh my gosh, I could I could fill a whole series with funny things that have happened. <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to more. And if you don't already, um, those who are listening, Sally does something called Sally's View, which I think she's sick of me talking about because I must say it every. Oh, no, no, I, I must no, I like it. to her, but I love it. And it's little videos, and they're all sorts of different topics. Sometimes about mortgages, sometimes not. Um, but the most recent one was a funny story. <laughs> happened and I shouldn't have thought about it because the problem is I'm gonna now laugh and not be able to stop but um I won't make you tell the story because people need to go and watch it although you are welcome to tell it but it made me laugh so much and I had had a particularly difficult day that day and it gave me so much relief it was lovely so um if you are giggling at the moment um, go and have a look because it, it's, it's well worth three minutes of your time yeah. and there's plenty more where that came from I've got them on notifications now so I get told when they come through so that I don't miss them um, yeah, so Sally what I want to talk about today and obviously I would talk to you just about you all day long um, but one thing I think that you particularly have managed to do really effectively and really well is like you've just said you really um you have those difficult conversations with your clients, but you know how to wrap it around serious information and um, you know how to keep it light, but also give them the right advice. And that sometimes that's being um, the firm, the firm voice when it comes yeah. to things like budget planning or um, spending planning, as we like to call it, because yeah. So the mindset spending planning sounds better budget makes you automatically feel restricted before you've even started yep, so I thought we could talk about that today because I know um it's something one of your topics that you do always sort of dive into particularly with first-time buyers but really with anyone that's looking yeah. to buy a property needs to be thinking about this so spending plans yes talk Very to me Yes. Tell me how you frame this um, with a client and well, what our listeners need to be thinking about. I always think that the whole mortgage process is it's, 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 it's there's two sections. There's obviously trying to borrow enough money to buy the house that you want or the flat that you want, the property mm -hmm. you want. But it's really, really important to try and work out whether you can actually afford what you want. And they go hand in hand. And I think sometimes we forget that that's a really, really important part, that affordability. And that's our job to try and assess that affordability. And the easiest way to do that is through a spending planner or budget planner. So I dive quite deep into it because mm -hmm. I always say, especially to first time buyers, you know, don't get carried away with your, the, the dream. The yeah. dream is you're in this beautiful home that you've, you know, you've moved out from your parents or whatever is holding you back and you're there. But if you're there with a candle and a can of cold beans, because that's all you can afford, it's, it's, it's I don't want that picture. You know, no, I, don't, no. I, don't, I don't want it. I don't want that phone call. <laughs> you know, what have you done? Well, you said you wanted a house for you know, £250,000. There you go. No, yeah, no, no. I actually want to live. Yeah. Well, I'm there's, in a, there's, house. A, there's a quality of life that's, in, that's important. Um, and if you talk to anybody about their spending patterns or their, their, their budget, they, they normally, you know, really underestimate <laughs> what they spend, mm -hmm. what life costs. It's not always you know, that they're, they're being um, flippant with money at all. It's, it's just life costs a lot of money. Yeah. So I think it's a really important um, start because there's no point getting a big loan if you can't afford it with your lifestyle. It's yes. just going to make you miserable. Um, it's not good brokering. It's not responsible lending. Um, no. And it's my job to make sure that it, the balance, it's, it's all balance. It's really yes. important. So important. So, mm -hmm. so where do people start? Because I think there's probably some people who are listening who are used to that and who probably, like myself, keep a spreadsheet or something yeah, where they record good. all of their bits and pieces, all their bills. But if you're a first-time buyer, I remember having no idea like sitting mm. in a cafe with my mum and dad and saying okay cool so yeah like 
where do I start? Like, yeah. obviously, I'm going to need money for food and Sky. That's all yeah. I remember <laughs> thinking I needed. <laughs> but I quickly found out about cows. Yeah. 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 I wouldn't say that that's essential. <laughs> oh, it felt essential, Sally. As a first time buyer, I was like, no, I have to have Sky. And this is where the, sort of the education, <laughs> and I think part of our role is education as well. Absolutely. Because you know, we are meant to be the experts. I don't expect anyone coming to me to know this stuff. No, I no. really don't. Um, and there's no shame in not knowing it. And I think that's really, really important. So I would start with what's your committed expenditure, things that you have to pay, things that if you don't pay, someone will come after you. Okay. So that's loans and credit cards um, yeah. and overdraft if you've got one. Um, council tax. You, council tax, exactly. And really important, and I try and get this into the first time buyers, certainly, because they're not used to it. You've got to think of yourself sitting in your new home and what bills are coming in. Yeah. And when you haven't had that experience, when mum and dad have paid council tax or it's all been wrapped up in, um, in a, um, as a, being a tenant, then you have no idea you know, what electric is going to cost or what the gas is going to cost in your council tax. So suddenly you've got all these extra expenses coming out of your salary that you've never had to budget. I'm going to use that word budget for before. Mm. So I use um, an actual planner where all this is, is, is set out. And I, I'm very happy to help the first time buyers research you know, what's the average electric bill for a two bedroom house. Um, go on the council website and work out their council tax, what it's going to be. Because, again, you know, they don't know and, no. and they, should, they shouldn't know. No. So it's really important to, to do the budgeting or the spending based on what you're going to be paying out in yeah. your new home that's that's I think the first thing that's really important which you know, people people think they've got loads of disposable income once those bills come in you haven't no <laughs> yeah, yeah. so you start with a committed and then yeah. you move on to what I call essential okay. so um keeping the roof over your head so food um probably include all the utilities in that as well yeah um the light the heat the power your car can you put gas in it Gas, mm. quite sound American. <laughs> <laughs> we do have American listeners, it's I'm fine. Thinking, I'm thinking of hydrogen <laughs> gas, it's because all this new, this cop, I've got a cop 26 yes. or whatever it's called in my petrol, head. Anyway. Petrol, petrol and gas. Petrol or diesel. Yes. No more diesel after 2030. No. <laughs> um, so gas in your, in your, in your, in your tank um, and uh, your insurance. That's important if you're going to have a car. I mean, obviously you can give up your car, but yeah. a lot of people can't, can't cope. How do you get to work if you don't have a car? train fares season tickets um, yeah. parking big ones yes. parking you know, these are things that you need to pay out they're yeah. not going to change so mm -hmm. that's really really important um, also a really weird one I had was um, things <laughs> pets if you have a pet and you insure them yes that, that is a not committed you could choose not to insure them but it's 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 fairly essential yeah have that so you've got to think in, in terms of that and if you've got an, a really expensive hobby so I had a, a client who um, raced cars um, glorified go-karts really but it cost him a certain amount of money and he'd missed it completely off the planet wow until you know I said well who pays for the running of your sort of very, very small team team um, yeah race team and he said oh well you know that's sort of separate well it's unless you've got a sponsor <laughs> yeah it's not separate it's, it needs to be figured into it um other people because I live in the country got clients who've got horses really expensive animals to yes keep. you've got yeah. to put the farrier bill the vet bill the um vaccinations all that sort of stuff um into it because it, it costs money so it's as individual um and as bespoke as as the client yeah. it's not one size fits all and that's one thing I've, I've really learned and what I love about this job is that it's never just you no know, box tick no it's just not like that everyone's different everyone is different and you've really got to take the time to find out about that client and their life and their you know their I don't want to use the word journey but you know where they are in their life and where yeah. they're going as well what they're going to be doing and and look into the future as to what might change in their expenditure. Yeah. 
you know not only are they going to get a promotion at work perhaps and earn more money what are their plans what do they want to do are they going to have children is one of them pregnant is there going to be childcare? what happens to their job if they're off on maternity leave how will that affect their income and yeah. therefore if they've still got the same expenditure going out it's going to affect their affordability absolutely there's, there's so much to it it's- there is and and then when you go past the essential you come on to the i don't go luxury or choice or yeah. whatever you would call that call it that um different breakers call yeah it different and things. i think that's that and that's where the sort of the cherry on top of your life is that's the fun bits isn't it? it's the going out it's the cine world pass it's the weekends away it's the yeah. dinners and that really makes the difference to life so it can't be underestimated and it, and it shouldn't be ignored it shouldn't I've had people say well I don't have to do that yeah okay fine no you don't but are you going to be happy yeah you know again sitting around that can of beans with a candle it's you know it's not an attractive picture so you've got to be realistic and yeah not too sackcloth and ashes about it no, you, and I think it's important, like you say, you judge it by different people because some people, I don't know if um, you've had any clients like this, Sally, but some people are the other end with it, so conservative mm. that you almost have to, um, you know, free them up a little bit, you know, and, and make them feel a little bit more comfortable about taking on the debt, for example. Yes. Um, but yeah. certainly majority, I think it's fair to say it's the other way around where we get blinkered, don't we? We see yeah. what we want. We've followed the home accounts on Instagram. We've Pinterested. We can see it. Yeah. Like, we've gone into the house. I, this is exactly what I want, this particular house. And yeah. I remember it vividly thinking, I won't care if I don't have Netflix, <laughs> if I get the house. I won't care if I can't go out for dinner because I'll just want to stay in my new house every day anyway. Yeah. Um, as we've spoke about off air and I've, I've mentioned it somewhere, potentially on the podcast, potentially okay. not. I did that to get to Leon C. I'm sure I've mentioned it on the podcast. So I'm not going to go into it, but I, um, I've had that conversation. I remember sitting with pen to paper thinking, okay, well, yeah, we only have 200 pounds a month left for food and petrol and going out that's fine like it's only two of us and it's fine we can definitely make that work and it was really difficult and um I don't regret it but I would have preferred to have had that pointed out which I've probably my parents did or someone probably did but do um, do you listen yeah but a mortgage broker that is somebody that I would like to think you would listen to otherwise what's really yes, the point exactly exactly you know use the expert advice it's 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 really it's really important I think and I, I can be quite I don't know whether it's because I'm <laughs> I'm a, I am a mum yeah <laughs> I can be quite you know come on now let's be let's get serious let's let's really think about this it's, it's your choice at the end of the day you can yeah. do what you like I'm not telling you how to live but I'm just pointing out that this is what it looks this, like. This is potentially what could happen. And if you're happy with that, you no, know, fine. Yeah. But it's 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 important. And how does that go down? Are your clients grateful for that? Um, <laughs> I haven't had any complaints. You <laughs> certainly haven't. You've had no, glowing I, I, reviews, but I, I wondered think, if I think so, I think so. I think it's. Um, and I know you've you've spoken about it before. I think there's. I do think of our role as being slightly um, as educators. Mm. It's really important to have these slightly uncomfortable conversations. We have a funny um, uh, reaction to talking about money. I don't know whether yes. it's in this country or whether it's you know, generational. Actually, I think the younger generation are better. They're a bit more open, but certainly, you know, I remember my parents, you, know, you don't talk about what um, religion, sex or politics. Well, you don't talk about money either. No, you know, it, I remember people being very caged about what they earn. Yeah, um, about you no know, bonuses, about what they spend. It's it's a it's a very emotive and almost there's an element of shame around it, mm. which I find weird, but it but it's there, definitely there. Um, so I think once you start talking about it and it becomes normal, people open up and they're they're actually quite grateful because it's a brilliant exercise and I always say you know, if, even if you don't go ahead and get a mortgage immediately because you 
haven't found the right property or circumstances change. It's a really good exercise to do. If yeah. you, you just have to sort of take a deep breath and go, right, I'm going to, I'm going to go into it and I'm going to look because it's, it's there. It's yeah. not as if you're manifesting it out of, out of nowhere. It's always there in yeah. the background. It's reality. And if you don't face it, it's just going to trip you up potentially further down the road. Yes. Do you know what I mean? It's, yes, um, absolutely. I think it's, but it, but it is difficult to do. That's why if you're holding their hand metaphorically and guiding them through it in a very ordered, quite clear, quite um, unemotional way, you know, factual, then yeah. it's easier to get get the heads around it and 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 accept the findings. Yeah. <laughs> and I have had you know couples bickering. I seem to get lots of bickering couples, don't I? Saying you know, <laughs> well, our deliveroo's through the roof. Well, that's you. Uh, <laughs> okay, guys, it's not really important. Yeah, who's got the deliveroo habit? It's um you know just just important to to um uh, be aware and to sort of accept that that's that is the situation and then yeah. you can change when you I always say when you know more you do more and when you know better you do better oh I love that yeah love that I'm sure that will end up being the start of the series of the when episode when you know better you do better so there's nothing to be frightened of no I love that yeah and I like that something you said other than that statement which I just think is so true is about um for whatever reason there's a lot of of shame attached to money and mm -hmm. I just something that came up that I just wrote down is is it almost we've subconsciously attached it to our identities yeah I think that's true and what I loved actually at the beginning is when I asked who Sally Mitchell is um you didn't tell me what you you did touch on what you've done as a career mm -hmm. but what we all tend to do right is say I am this I do this but we don't then go on to say who we are outside of that um, yeah. because we wrap our identity up in money and what we do. So that yeah. just sprung in my head and gave me a little light bulb moment as you were talking, so I had to share that. Yeah. Um, uh, but yes, and couples arguing oh, 100%. Money, I think, is one of the main reasons people argue. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It, it, it just is. And I think especially when it comes to spending, especially because we all spend money and you are cross sometimes you're cross with yourself but it's so much easier when you're cross with yourself to look at the person next year well it's probably you or those habits that you kind of live with you yeah. know you end up getting annoyed when it affects your mortgage application potentially yeah yeah it's it's quite it's never it's never that I've not, I haven't had these sort of nuclear moments <laughs> no it's been over a delivery a little, bit, hopefully not. little bit exactly but a little bit of you know perhaps potentially a little bit of resentment yeah comes through and it's um the, i don't know there's a there's you know, money equals power so there's maybe balance of power issues with the yeah. money and how the money's allocated you know who earns more it's, yes it's it's a very tricky um thing to sort of navigate to get it right because you, you don't want to st stir up a whole hornet's nest no <laughs> i want and, them to leave my zoom call feeling really good feeling great and also oh. your own parents how your parents are with money is mm. obviously how you are built to be around money until you potentially decide to change those habits or at least be aware of them yeah. so that for first time buyers particularly if you're a couple that happens yes. you suddenly are faced with you don't argue about this stuff because you don't have to mm. but all of a sudden you have different opinions absolutely I should have a rainy day fund no you don't need a rainy day fund yeah, yeah. Oh. live for the moment yeah don't worry about something that hasn't happened yeah and so you have I remember with with John like my husband I don't even think I've said his name before on here <laughs> um but I remember because he was quite and still is more conservative with money and I came from very much that environment with my mum and dad like you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow enjoy today mm. so we but over the years we've blended the two into something really great but mm. at the beginning you just think you're right and yeah. you, where you come from is what you know and like you just quite rightly said you only know what you know before you can do better yeah um so so where can people start obviously we can give out this budget plan I can't we after today yes. people are listening and thinking I want Absolutely. this I want to do it but it's a really good tool. 
really good tool. And I, I don't know if um, anyone else has it, but um, I know you've been doing your financial spreadsheet for the last year, is it? Yes. And I had with my, um, uh, I can't remember who it was now, but I had um, a credit card and I put everything and I always paid it off, paid off yeah. in full, Martin Lewis. In yes. Full, every month. <laughs> Just a quick shout out to Martin. Um, but at the end of the year, they would give me, and they probably don't even do it anymore, but they would give me a breakdown of and, and, and headings of what I'd spent under each heading. It was amazing. Which credit card is this? That sounds well, amazing. I can't, I think it might've even been like American Express, which is not everybody's thing. Yeah. Credit card. That sounds it, very good though. It was really good and quite alarming. Yes. Really alarming. Um, and it made me think, ooh, ooh, <laughs> when I say I haven't, I haven't got enough money, I know, I know why now. Yeah. We need to rein this in. I mean, this was when I was actually, okay, fashion buying. So this is hilarious. Well, I think it's hilarious. So I worked <laughs> at this lovely boutique and I went, fashion buying twice a year we went to London Fashion Week we ended up in Paris wow it was, it was, it was lovely but of course the upshot was this little job <laughs> that was I was meant to have to supplement funds when I was bringing up the children I ended up owing money <laughs> I'm not surprised to, <laughs> to the shop yeah. and so you know, literally I would get a negative pay slip <laughs> it'd be my pay <laughs> and then oh, maybe all no. the things that I bought <laughs> working for free oh my I mean, god how sad it was we've so, just really nice clothes <laughs> really nice clothes it was i was the best dressed poor person oh my god in, in the village um yeah so, so you can so see how that would happen though oh it's so easy because it's a bargain everything's bargain so i'm buying them buying it all at cost <laughs> It's a bargain. But it's still designer a bargain, which is basically <laughs> still triple the price, and, at least. You know, we all need 12 pairs of jeans, don't we? Yeah. Different, different oh, yeah, we absolutely do. So I know how, how, it, <laughs> how it can happen. Yeah. So I think your um, programme of you know, doing writing it all down yourself is in, A, incredibly disciplined, but actually really, really good. Yes, I'm going to talk about that because I yeah, think I going so. into the new year, I think it's a really good time to do it if you haven't done this already. Now, this time last year, um, we were, I've always done the money in our house. I don't know how other households work, but I've always been the one that does the money. And John says to me, um, how's it looking when I do our money? And I go, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, right. It's fine. Um, and he's like, how much did we spend this month? And I tell him and he'd go, seriously, that sounds a lot. And I'm like, I, yeah, I know. Yeah, I, I don't know on what. I don't know why. I mean, we had so-and-so's birthday, but we didn't spend a lot on that. And I don't know why we haven't paid for a holiday or anything. I'm not sure. It's just, yeah, it must just be bits and pieces. And so we went into the new year thinking we can't just keep saying bits and pieces because I want to know what they are. Yeah, and if we don't know what they are, yeah, how can we change it? That's not it? a category on my budget plan. No, no <laughs> it's not. Bits and pieces, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bits and pieces, just stuck it under that. So what I started, I, uh, I elaborated my existing spreadsheet. It's basically got a list of all my bills. It's got a list of the income. So that's the starting balance. Yeah, I know what it should be. And then this is the discipline bit. I write down everything. So it goes on a credit card. We pay it off in full. I write down everything. Oh, don't do it every week. It's probably every two weeks. And it's like a little moment. I make it very nice. I get under a blanket. <laughs> I'll make sure I'm really cozy and comfy so that I'm in a good headspace to that. sit and do it with something on telly. And it's like a little job of mine. I quite enjoy it actually now. Um, and I'll list everything. And then this does sound a bit anal, but I then we'll categorize that so it's color coded so yeah. there's food there's going out eating out socializing treating the kids kids clothes kids clubs a lot of kids um birthdays mm -hmm. and gifts and um there's various other categories but essentially it comes into those categories yeah and then i summarize it so i can see what we thought we'd spend versus what we did at the end of the month and um we've got to a great place with with food i know exactly what we spend every month and it's always the same pretty much mm. but it's really interesting to see the categories that i that we do overspend if you like or spend more than i thought we would yeah to me that's gifts yeah and um what i've and, and kids treats so i can then identify a pattern with my spending which is i like to spend on other people okay so i can dive into that that's a good that's a good thing yeah 
<laughs> it is a good like, thing. Don't stop, Sarah. Don't stop. No. Yeah. No. It's unlucky, everyone. That's Christmas 2021. <laughs> no. But I can go. Okay. I'm not going to change it yet. I just want to observe it for the year. Yeah and see what happens across the year. And I'm really looking forward to analyzing it all, but I can dive into that. And and really, if I want to change it, I can ask myself, okay, why do you, why do you do that? Is that coming from the right place? Do you feel like if you stopped doing that, that would impact your relationships? And the truth is I would, I would think, oh, that's going to impact my friendships. They're going to feel X. Uh, And that's when you start to really notice some psychology behind your money patterns. Now that's a year long experiment. Um, but it's a year will go by whether you do it or not. So you might as well do it. Absolutely. It's always there in the background. It's just always there. Like, a, like a sleeping dragon. Yeah. Waiting, and waiting to spit. <laughs> yeah. And it's so interesting. And mm. I definitely am so looking forward to analyzing it, but I definitely feel like it's improved across the year as well, just because I've just become more aware yeah. and um, I'm okay with certain things and I'm, you know, questioning others. So I would definitely recommend that um, to anybody that is thinking oh I want to dive into this I want yeah. to do more um but for some they'll listen to me and go oh stuff that I cannot be bothered to create a spreadsheet no for my I know I do get it but if you but you've got to think about your oh my god it sounds so boring but um, <laughs> this is the broker <laughs> coming out of me it's the mortgage person but if you think of yourself and yeah. your home so your family your home and what you spend your money on it's, think of it as a business Oh, yes, like this. And you wouldn't just go, la, 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 you know, with the business. No one can see me doing that. I'm putting my hands over my eyes. <laughs> la, 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 la. <laughs> you know, I'm not paying any attention. I'm not looking at the, um, the work that's coming in or the invoicing. I'm not, I'm just, uh, yeah, I'll have that piece of machinery. What the hell? It doesn't matter. You wouldn't run a business like that. No. And at the end of every year, you would be accountable through your accounting accounts um, yeah. for, you know, what you had done and also your, your, um, how you, behaved you know, your, your yes your performance it. yeah exactly sorry that's it that's the word performance yeah I was not thinking about that um so it's it's someone would hold you accountable either yes. your shareholders or your employees because yes. if, you don't, if you mess it up they don't get paid or they lose their jobs yes um so if you can think of it not sort of I'm a bad person I spend too much money if I look at it I just know I'm going to feel really dreadful about myself think of it as a bit more a bit colder than that a bit more like it's it's a business yeah and it I just want to make sure that it's it's a healthy business it can be any type of business mm-hmm. you know it can be in the service thing it, it can it can be investment it can be whatever you want it to be it could be you could pretend you're amazon it doesn't matter but it's got to it's got to it's got to work definitely mm-hmm. and it's really good collaborative thing to do because it actually brings you together in a healthy way to talk about money and open up that conversation with each other and become aware together so it's it's a great exercise if there's two of you in the household to share um those patterns and behaviors and And if you start figuring just phone me and I'll (laughs) yeah and then (laughs) yeah once you you argue over the spreadsheet just (laughs) ring Sally for the counseling on the side couples counseling (laughs) mortgage broker (laughs) presenter on Sally's view she does it all everything (laughs) <laughs> and I'm assuming you must still know a little bit about fashion as well, Sally. So, you know, now I know this art oh, and fashion art advice and fashion. also coming to you. Yeah, they are my 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 things. I only got into <laughs> art because I was um, it sounds really, really ridiculous, but I was a bit of a bit of a when I say a bit of a collector, <laughs> I'm not exactly having my own wing at the Tate, <laughs> but I love art. And I've collected it over um, many Have you? years. Mm. Yeah. And I ran out of room in my house and I was, <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't stop buying art. I mean, not particularly expensive, but I love art. Yeah. So um, an artist friend of mine uh, from New Yorker said, and this is the way to get me to do anything, flattered me by saying, I think we're all the same. Yeah. Um, flattered me by saying, you've got such a good eye. But I was like, oh, have I? <laughs> <laughs> well <laughs> As i bought another one of his paintings <laughs> uh, you know saw me coming um you should it's just like my brother it wasn't my brother he's not an artist that's just like my brother all these people come up with ideas for me yeah. you should run a gallery you could do um be a gallerist which is a thing yeah <laughs> so i thought god that's a darn good idea doing everything i love 
but yeah. doing it for other people. Again, that sort of slightly helping, educating, guiding people yes. who haven't got a clue and why should they? But everybody knows what they like when they see it. Yes. You know, it's just, it's, it's not, it's not rocket science. I like that. Good. Why? I don't know. I just like it. Yeah. It's a <laughs> feeling, isn't it? Exactly. And I think that's what's really important about art. God, I'm going way off, way off piece here. But it's, it, to me, everyone, everyone always says, you know, what is art? Well, first of all, I think it has to be created by a person. It can yeah. be music, it can be drama, it could be painting, it could be sculpture, it could be anything, it could be felting. Um, but it's got to be created by a person in my mind, and I'm sure there are people out there who will disagree. But it has to also bring some sort of emotional reaction in you. Yes. And that's what, I work, what I've sort of worked out for me. It, and it can be a positive reaction. It can actually be a, quite a, a dark, scary reaction. You know, we don't, not all art makes you go warm and fuzzy. No, that's it, very it, true. It can make you very sad. It, it can make you very angry. It can disgust you, but it's causing a reaction, yeah. an emotion. And to me, that's what art is. And I can't remember where I was going with this now. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so I, I started doing um, uh, finding paintings for and sculpture for clients to fit in. Because it's just like mortgage breaking, to fit in with their lifestyle, their budget, yeah. their needs, their house, um, the way they live. You know, are they um, big open plan orangery with kitchen with dining area onto a beautiful terrace in a garden fan loads of light and loads of glass fantastic or are they in a very um old dark panelled quite gothic quite serious sensible house so yeah. you've got to think about their you know their, their lifestyles and also what do they want that art to say about them which is a mm. whole different podcast <laughs> but all I keep thinking as well when I'm listening to you is how much it aligns with finding a home because yes, it does it's a, that's a feeling yes yeah. obviously yes you tick box I want a driveway I want this I want that but yeah. ultimately you buy a house unless it's an investment based on a gut. feeling it's gut yeah. isn't it you walk in this is the house this is, this is it yeah. it's got the right feel yeah often don't even tick all the boxes and no, you just exactly. go I just love it could yeah. be what I want it to be yeah and your and, wish list or your shopping list goes out the window because yeah. that's the house for you and that's really all I could think when I heard you talking about art I thought well this is actually really aligned mm. with that world with your experience with the experience mm. um it's so amazing to see and I think for anybody for people listening as well it just shows you that and, and I think this is what where the magic comes here because to be a great broker, I just think that comes down to a person. Um, it can be, it's not, not everyone can make it, but, and I truly believe that, sadly. Mm. Uh, once upon a time, I didn't. Once upon a time, I thought anybody could be a broker. But it does show you that it, you don't need to come from a specific background yeah. for it to work. It just, that's almost a feeling too. And yeah, almost an undefinable thing until you start doing it you're not going to know really what it's like yeah. um and whether you whether you'll do it I mean I can categorically say you are a fantastic broker um <laughs> and your reviews speak for themselves and I think what today gives people is a real window into you a real flavor mm -hmm. of who Sally is that's beyond the posts and the pictures it's really hard unless you hear someone to really get underneath their skin to really get it and I th feel like I've I feel like we've really demonstrated that today between us in this episode oh, and I it's think people great, really it? love it's not it. Over, is it? <laughs> it it is we have been oh, talking for an hour no I know I know you'll hate this Sally but I'm going to get you back because I think talking about these topics with you is just great and I think people will love it um feedback to us please if you're listening and thinking yes, I did love it I loved it yeah, she talks let too much. us know no they won't that's the whole point of a podcast you're meant to talk you're allowed to talk um I loved it and I think we've I think you've come up with some great points um for people with their spending plans with their budgeting that's just so. one aspect of a mortgage you have to look at affordability as people know but obviously this Essential. does now come into it so <clears throat> <clears throat> wow. 
<laughs> nearly choked on my own air. Um, <laughs> what we're going to do is pop in the show notes a link to the budget planner if we can. If not, yeah, we'll put an email address so people can get it. Um, how do people reach you, Sally? We'll put your social media links in. Yep, it's all there. I have a YouTube channel as well. If you just put in Sally's View, you'll get all the videos. www.sallysview.co.uk and sallythemortgagemum.co.uk Fabulous. That will go straight to my special page on the Mortgage Mum website. Can't wait. Which That's won't excellent. give you any, any flavour of what, <laughs> what I've just spoken about at all. No, but I think numbers. we will work on that, I think. Um, that's definitely a work in progress <laughs> to get the website reflecting everyone more. And this is the start because your podcast can go on there. Thank Lovely. you, Sally, so, so much. Thank you. Um, be bef- before you go, the last question I want to ask you and oh. I ask all our guests is, what is the biggest, and this is a hard question and very deep and meaningful, what is the biggest lesson you've learned in your life so far that you can share with our listeners? Oh, my God, that there's no such thing as black and white. It's all shades of grey. And I'm not talking about the book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just thought I'd better caveat that. <laughs> <laughs> that is the most classic Sally ending to this podcast ever. We couldn't have wrote that better. It's not the book. It's not- <laughs> that it's fifty shades of grey. <laughs> no, it's it's not. Not- That's what I've learned. <laughs> 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 no i'll start again <clears throat> start again there's there's no such thing as black and white it's all just shades of gray without yes. any smiling yeah I whatever you think is black and white whatever you think is true whatever you think is is immovable it's not it's i love that constantly shifting and you have to bend with it you do And you're very good at that. You have to remind me of that (laughs) with a laugh, if you can, with a bit of laughter and fun. It's essential. (laughs) It is. Thank you, Sally, so much. I'm pretty sure you'll have um, you'll have helped people have a little giggle today as well. I hope so. That is my MO. (laughs) Yeah. No, it's been amazing. Thank you so, so much. Pleasure. Thank you.